colour placement is one of the things I get asked about most. So I thought I'd show you my easy method for achieving a random looking colour placement for a baby sized granny square blanket. I say random looking as although the overall effect will look random, it is very much a planned placement. I was really fortunate to be gifted a set of Yarn Smith's Create DK yarn pegs by Wool Warehouse last year. If you haven't used yarn pegs before, I really recommend investing in a set or you could make your own. These pegs here were expertly wound by Eliza and the Giraffe and you can find her shop on Etsy and she stocks lots of different sets of different brands of yarn. They're a great way of working out your colour combos and I can lose hours playing around with these pegs. It's great fun. So the first thing you need to do is choose your colour combination. So my baby blankets, my baby sized granny square blankets, I choose six colours five which I'll use for the actual squares and one colour for joining. The next thing I do is work out the order that I want my colours to be in as I'm going to be using the colours in the exact same order for every single granny square. So as you can see here I've got my green, my beige, my brown, my turquoise and my white and that's the order that I'm going to be using for my granny squares. If you're using five colours and you're making five round granny squares, so one colour for each of the rounds, there's only five possible combinations that you can get when you're using the colours in the same order. So I make my first five squares, but I start round one with a different colour. So as you can see, this first one here, I'm starting with the green. And then the next colour in the sequence is the beige. And then the next one is the brown. And the next one is turquoise and the next one is the white so you can see i've worked them in exact order the second square that i've made i've started with the beige so i'm going to move the green over there and that's your new order so the beige and then the brown then the turquoise then the white then the green that's that one and then the third square i'm starting with the brown this time but the same order again so the brown the turquoise the white the green and the beige and then for my fourth square I'm starting with the turquoise, then the white, the green, the beige and the brown. And then finally, my fifth square, I'm starting with the white, followed by the green, the beige, the brown and the turquoise. So as you can see, you end up with five squares, but all of them are worked with the same order of colours. I've just started round one with a different colour. These first five squares are now my blueprint designs for the rest of the squares. I make 25 granny squares for my baby size blankets. So what I'll do is I'll make four more carbon copies of each of the first five designs. And this will give me a five by five blanket. The next job is to lay the squares out in the order that I want them to be in. It's a bit like Sudoku this, but with granny squares rather than numbers. So what you're aiming for is each row and column con to contain one of each of the five square designs. So I've laid out one row already and then I'm going to take my squares and start laying out the next row. So we're just taking care not to put the same design square next to the same design. It might take a little bit of jigging about sometimes. Put that one there. We need a green one. So that's the next row. Now I've not got a lot of room so I'm just going to overlap those ones so that I can do all the rows. Okay, and then onto our next row. So I'll put a green one there. I think I'll put a turquoise one there. And then, oh no, I've already got a brown one here. So I can't put a brown one there because it's in the same column. So I'm going to move the brown one over to there. And I'll put the beige one there instead. Oh, now this presents a problem because I've already got a white one there. So I'm just going to swap some things about. And just double check that I haven't got any duplicates. I think they're all looking okay. So it's on to the next row. So I'm having a look now. Haven't got a beige one in that one. I think I'll put a white one over there. And then a green one here. Brown one here. And a turquoise one here. And then the last row should be fairly easy because these squares can only go in one place now. So I'm having a look to see which one hasn't got a beige. Beige one there. 
which one hasn't got brown, which one hasn't got green, that one's not got a white, and then that should leave the turquoise. And that's your five rows all laid out. Once you've got your squares all laid out, you're ready to join them. My preferred method is continuous join as you go, and you can find a video tutorial for that on my channel. It's worth investing the time to learn this method, as it makes joining quick, there's hardly any ends to sew in, and it's just a more enjoyable process than sewing them all together, I find. A little tip from me is to take a photo of your layout, and then you can refer to it whilst you join. Continuous join as you go is a, not exaggerating at all, life-changing technique which makes joining quick and enjoyable. It really is worth spending the time to learn this technique as it enables you to join all of your squares without needing to fasten off your yarn after each one. This of course means less ends to deal with. Win-win. I've joined six squares into two rows for this tutorial, but it's the same process no matter how many squares you have and how many rows you need to join. I'll be using UK crochet terms throughout the tutorial and you'll need to be familiar with slip knots, slip stitches, chains, double crochets and treble crochets. I thought it would be a good idea to show you the joining journey before starting so you can see the direction we'll be taking. We're going to start up here in the top right hand corner and this becomes our square one and then we'll work around a couple of the sides of square one and then join onto square two round square two and then join onto square three round that way and then we'll work the bottom edges of all those three squares we'll then join onto square four working that way and then join onto square five working again that way and then join on to square six, working around that way, and then all the way along the bottom edge again before we go along the side, right up to the finish, which is back where we started. I'm going to take my joining yarn colour, make a slip knot, and pop it on my hook. And then starting in a corner chain space on my first square, I'm going to make a double crochet and one chain, and that counts as our first treble. Next, make two trebles into the same chain space. One chain and three trebles. All in that same chain space. And that's our first corner made there. Move along to the next chain space and just like you do with your granny squares, make three trebles into that chain space. Move along to the next chain space, make three trebles. Over to the corner and three trebles. One chain, three trebles. Now we're working along the second side of this first granny square. So three trebles into the next couple of chain spaces. And when you get to the next corner chain space, we're not going to make the full corner. We're just going to do the first half. So make three trebles you can see we've worked two sides of our granny square and now we're going to join our next granny square so granny square number two 
So we're going to work a treble. We don't need to make any chains here. Some people do, I don't. And then into a corner chain space, work three trebles into that same, let's turn around, same chain space. Be careful you don't twist your granny square like I did there. So you've got now your granny square joined together with granny square number one at the corner here. Fold your granny squares together so that you've got the right sides facing you or the right sides outwards. And then you're going to make a slip stitch from granny square one into that hole there. So slip stitch, and then you're going to work three trebles into the next chain space on granny square number two. So once again, a slip stitch into the next space and then three more trebles into the next space along on square number two. So slip stitch into the next space. And now we've got to our corner. So three trebles into the corner space on square number two. Do a slip stitch into that corner space on square number one. And then complete your corner by working three trebles into that corner space on square number two. So I'll just take that out to show you. So you've now joined square number one to square number two along this edge here. So we're now just going to work our trebles as normal, our treble clusters and corner stitches as normal around the top edge here and down to the bottom here. But remember when you get to the corner, we're just going to work half of the corner. So I'm just coming up to the corner now, I'm just going to work three trebles into this corner. So you can see now we've worked around the two edges on square number two and we're now going to join square number three in the same way that we did with square number two. So pick your square three up and work three trebles into any corner space of square three. Hold your square number three and square number two together so that the right sides are out and make a slip stitch into the first space on square two. And then make three trebles into the space on square number three. So 
slip stitch into the next space along on square number two and three trebles into the space on square number three. Slip stitch into the next space on square number two. And then our corner stitch, our corner space, three trebles. Slip stitch into the corresponding corner over on square number two and then complete your corner stitches with three trebles into that same corner space on square number three. So once again, we're gonna work our three trebles into each of the spaces around and our corner stitches. And I'll meet you back round at the bottom there of square number three. So we've now joined our three squares together in a row. So you can see where we've started here and then we've worked our way around the squares like so. And we now need to finish off the bottom edges of the squares. So we're gonna to continue to work along this bottom edge here. So to do that, first of all, we need to complete this corner stitch. So chain one and then three trebles into that corner. And continue to work your three trebles into each of the spaces along this first granny square here. When you get to the corner stitch, as you can see, we've already done half of the corner there. So we just need to complete the other half of the corner. So work three trebles into that corner chain space. And then you're going to work a slip stitch into the middle of the join. So it's right there in the middle there, so slip stitch there. And then we're moving on to the next granny square and to complete the corner stitch there. So three trebles into the corner chain space. You don't need to work any extra chains there. Some people do, but I, I don't find it's necessary. So you can see there where you've worked along that last edge of the granny square slip stitch into the middle of the join and then completed the corner stitch on the next granny square. So continue working your three trebles into the next couple of spaces. And once again, we're at the corner. So work your three trebles into the corner space. And then you're going to work a slip stitch once again into the middle of the join, that gap there. And then complete the corner on the next granny square. So three trebles into that corner space. Move along to the next space and make three trebles. And 
next space, three more trebles. And that brings us along to that last corner and work just three trebles into this one. So again, we're just going to work half the corner, just three trebles into that corner space. So we've now completed our first row. So we're now going to join the next row. So we're going to start with what will be square number four, which will be joining onto what was originally square number one. So make three trebles into any of the corner chain spaces on the next square. And that joins it onto square number one. And then once again, we're going to hold our squares with the right sides outwards. So we're going to be joining our square along this edge here. And make a slip stitch through there. And then make three trebles into the next space on square number four. The same process that we use to join the other squares. So slip stitch again to join them. And then three trebles. And then another slip stitch to join. And we've got to our corner now. So three trebles into the corner chain space. And we're first of all going to do a slip stitch into the first corner of what was square number one. So slip stitch through there. And then we're gonna complete the corner by working three trebles into that same corner chain space on square four. And then we're going to continue working three trebles into the spaces along the side of square four. That's one. Two, three, and another three trebles into this space. And then we're at the next corner and we're just going to work half the corner. So three trebles into that corner chain space. Let me turn that round for you to see. So you've now joined square number four onto square number one. So you've got your second row forming here. We're now going to join square five and we're going to join it along this edge and this edge here. So make three trebles into any of the corner chain spaces on square number five. Turn it round and hold it against square number four with the right side outwards. Make your slip stitch into the first space on square number four. And make three trebles into the next space on square number five. Another slip stitch to join to square number four. And three more trebles in the next space on square number five. So 
slip stitch into the next space on square number four to join those together. And now we've reached the corner. So work three treble into the space, the corner space on square number five. And then we need to join at the corner of square number four and square number two. So how we do that is first of all, slip stitch into the corner of square number four. And then slip, to, slip stitch into the opposite corner. And that's the corner of square number two. And then complete your corner stitch on square number five by working the three treble into the corner space. Slip stitch into the next space, which is on square number two. And then I'll just take the hook out and show you. So you can see here that you've joined all the squares at the corner. And we're going to continue working along this edge here and then down this edge here. So the next job is to work three trebles into the next space along square number five. And then a slip stitch into the next space on square number two. And then three trebles into the next space on square number five. Slip stitch into the next space on square number two. And then we've reached the corner, so three trebles into the corner space on square number five. And we need to join at the corner of square number two, so a slip stitch into the corner space there. And then complete the corner stitch on square number five by working three treble into that corner space. And then continue along this, this side of square number five by working three trebles into the spaces. And we've reached that corner and just work three trebles into this corner. So we're just working half the corner stitch. I'll just take that out to show you. So you've now joined five squares. You've almost finished your second row. So we're now going to join square number six. So it's going to be the same process joining square six as it was when we joined square five. So make three trebles into the corner space of square number six. And we now need to join it onto square number five. So find that first space on square number five to slip stitch into and then three trebles into the next space on square number six
slip stitch into the next space and three trebles into the next space slip stitch to join and then we're at the corner so three trebles into the corner space on square number six and we need to now join at the corners so first of all we need to join at the corner with square number five so slip stitch into that one and then we need to join the corner with what was square number three, which is directly opposite square number five. Slip stitch into there and then three trebles into that corner to finish it off on square number six. Can't tell you how difficult it is crocheting in this unnatural way under a camera. <laughs> so we're now going to join square six to square number three so slip stitch into the next space on square number three and then three trebles into the space next along on square number six Slip stitch to join. And three trebles into the next space. Slip stitch to join. And then we've reached the corner. So three trebles into the corner space on square number six. And we need to now join at the corner with square number three. So into the corner there, slip stitch, complete our corner stitches on square number six. So three trebles into that same chain space. And continue working along the side of uh, square number six. Three trebles into the space. Three trebles into the next space. And we've reached the corner and three trebles into that corner chain space there. I'll take my hook out and show you. So we've now joined six squares into two rows, but we need to finish our join off. So we've still got this edge to work along here and this edge to work along here to take us right back to where we started from. So what we need to do first is complete the corner stitch down here, chain one and three trebles. Three trebles into the next space. Three trebles into the next space. And then we're at the corner. So work three trebles into the corner. And then slip stitch between the join, into the gap between the join there. 
continue along the edge of the next two squares till you get to your corner and then just work your corner as normal here and then continue up this edge to finish those ones up. So I'm going to carry on doing that now and I'll meet you once we get towards the end. So we're almost at the end now, just putting my last three trebles into that last space. That brings us right back to the beginning and then just slip stitch into the top of the first stitch that you made. And that's it. So you've now joined your six squares in two rows without having to cut your yarn after joining each square. Thank you very much for watching my tutorial. You can find more videos on my channel and find more information about this particular blanket on my blog. Keep up to date with what I'm making by following Little Dove Crochet on Facebook and Instagram. Bye for now.